how to create a project timeline template in 10 simple steps using Excel 2010. Just a quick note for you, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I'd advise you to come over to my website and check out my article because you can download the template from there and also you'll see my written instructions, my step-by-step -step instructions for how to create this timeline. So let's start with the end in mind. This means if you're doing this from scratch without any of my step-by-step -step instructions, I'd recommend you get a blank piece of paper and start sketching out the timeline, for example, like this. Uh, you've got the axis, and then you might have the duration bars out here, some more tasks and phases, another duration bar, and a couple more there, and maybe the completion percentage in green or you just just get it out like this. It doesn't have to be pretty, as you can see mine is pretty messy but then you just get a rough idea of what you're looking for and maybe just a red line like so, that's the today line that will show where we are today. Just a rough sketch like that. But since I've already created the timeline and you can download it at my website on the, the article link uh, let me show it to you. Having this in mind helps you as you progress through my steps. For example, you'll see that we have tasks and phases along this side. You've got groups of one, two, three, four. Oops. So we've got four phases to work on, and we've got our chart legend up here, and we've got a today line that moves with the date. So keep that picture in mind as we work through these steps. Step 2. Create your project events table. Now in my template I plan to put the scatter chart here um, and then below that we have the data set. So let me just scroll down you can have a look at that in more detail. In row 30 I've got the table headings. Just above I've just recorded what the different parts of the table do in the chart and I suggest you check out my article for a full explanation of each of the columns and the contents in them. Step 3 insert the XY scatter chart. So we have here the space where the chart is going to go. Let me get rid of this text box and Let's now create the XY scatter chart to visualize the project event data. What I'm going to do is select cell B4. I'm going to go to the insert menu. In the charts group, I'm going to click on the scatter chart. I'm going to select scatter with only markers. And now I'll reposition this. Now what helps is holding down the ALT key as you drag and reposition because that gives you the ability to snap to cells. That's a good way to accurately position. So now I've got this chart in the range B4 to K20, let's do it K26. I will right click the empty chart I will click on select data and now I'll add a data series by clicking on the add button. For the series name I'm going to select E30 which is duration. For the series X values I will select C33 down here to C46 series of Y values I'm going to select H33 to H46 and now I'll click OK and OK again scroll up and we should see the simple scatter chart with a default formatting. Let's format the event markers to green diamonds. Click on a data point to select the series. Right click on the data point and select Format Series. Click on the marker options 
and select the built-in marker type. Let's choose, uh, let's stick with a diamond and we'll increase this to size 10. And now we go to the marker fill, we select the solid fill, we want it to be a green. Now I'll close that. So now we've created a scatter chart with one data series called a duration. Uh, what we should do at this point is change this uh, text to say, let's double click that, let's change that to say project timeline. Step 4, clean up the chart formatting on your timeline scatter chart. So in Excel 2010, which is what I'm using here, a nice way to do this is to use the chart tools menu which comes up when you click on a chart. So up here, chart tools, I'm going to click on layout. So the first thing I'll do is turn off the y-axis. Let's look for the axes. The primary vertical axis, I will click none. The second thing I'll do is to go to the horizontal guidelines. Here are the primary horizontal guidelines. I'm also going to turn them off because we don't need them. The third thing I'm going to do is to turn off the legend. We're going to add uh, our own quite special text boxes in step 10, well, at least in my opinion I think they're quite special. So we're going to turn off the default legend. And then finally I'm going to choose to display the data labels and position them left of the data points. Right now we come to adding the event labels. Doing this step it's quite tricky and time consuming because you need to select each and every label in the data series and then relabel it. Let me show you how to do the first few uh, step by step, then I'll whiz through the rest. So, you click on the event label. That selects the whole data series, so it effectively selects all the data labels for the data series. Uh, make sure you don't click on the actual green marker because that selects the data points. You want to select the labels. Now clicking on it again, and you'll see that just selects the one label. Press equals and that starts to type a formula in the formula bar up here. Now click on, in this case it would be D33, so phase one. That's our first event. And you'll see it's entered this formula equals timeline, exclamation mark, D33, which is the external reference to this worksheet. Uh, press enter and you'll see it's changed that to a phase 1, which is what the contents of cell D33 was. I'll do that again for this data label, so I'll click on that, we'll press equals, and then I'll go down to D34, which is task 1-1, one -one. press enter, and you'll watch this data label change. Okay, so let me do that for the rest of these data labels, and I'll just speed this up a little bit. Right, so now I've done all the adding labels, I'm going to freeze panes just at row 28. Uh, that's so that I can keep the timeline in view all the time. The way to do this is to go to the View menu, go to Windows, uh, the Window Group, Freeze Panes, and Freeze Panes. So you'll see this new black line has been inserted. If I scroll the scroll bar, you'll see this the bottom half of the window moves and not the top half. So this project timeline can stay in view all the time. Just a quick note then on adding or changing the event labels. It's, it took me quite a long time just to do this handful of tasks. If you wanted to have more tasks or if you just don't want to fiddle around with editing each label, you might be able to use macros or VBA to automate this and I'll touch on this briefly in my next article which you'll be able to find when it comes online at www.launchexcel.com forward slash timelines dash in dash excel dash bonus. 
In step 5, we'll add grey duration bars to show how long each event takes, and also blue drop lines down to the axis. The way to do this is using X error bars and Y error bars, but first let me just remind you which one's which. So this one is the Y axis, and this one is the X axis. And what we're looking to do is add grey duration bars this way for the, the phases and the tasks, and like so each task. Then we'd like to add blue drop downs from the, mile, the markers, event markers down to the axis and this way as well. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select the chart, uh, just select the background there. In the chart tools menu uh, click on layout and in the current selection group we'll need to select the series duration. What we'll go do now is look in the analysis group under error bars. We'll click more error bar options which will bring up the error bars dialog box. We want to make sure first we've got the X error bars selected so let's go select those first and it should say horizontal error bars here the first thing we'll do is to display them in just a plus direction, which is to the right. And we'll have no cap, because we don't want an extra line sticking out. And here we'll select custom. And when we specify the values, we're going to specify the range E33 for the positive, so E33 down to E46, which is the duration and we don't care about the negative ones because we're not showing the negative X error bars. Click OK. So you'll see if I just move that out of the way, you'll see the error bars have come out. And now what we want to do is do some formatting for them to make them grey. So line color, we want solid lines. We'll select the color grey. We'll go to line style. Let's change the width to something like four points and we'll close that and oh, no, actually don't close it yet we'll leave it open but what I'll do is I'll move this out of the way and you can see that we've added the grey error bars so that shows how long each event takes the next step we'll do is to go back up here and select the Y error bars and you should notice it says the vertical error bars what we'll do here is change the direction to minus which just does from the marker down to the axis. We'll select the end style no cap because we don't want an extra line appearing at the end. And here we'll put a percentage. Let's do 100%. And what you'll see there is it has added these drop lines to the axis. And now let's do a bit more formatting. We'll go line color. I'll choose a blue color. Let's choose this blue and I'll change the line style. Let's make this two points, so half the width of the grey ones. And let's do a dash type. Let's select dashes like so. And we'll close that. And there we are. We have the duration bars and the drop lines. So step six is to add a data series for completion. And what I mean by that is a green line that shows approximately how much of the phase is complete, and that's 95%, 100% complete, maybe 90% complete, and same with phase 2, it could be say 80% complete, task 1 almost done, task 2 just started, and task 3, phase 3 not started, and phase 4 not started. So we'll add a data series, select the chart area, right click on it, and select data. Next we'll add a new data series. We'll call that completion which is in cell G30. We'll select the X values at cells C30, uh, C33 down to C46. And the Y values we'll select at H33 to H46 which is the height. I'll click OK and click OK. 
you'll see that it's added those red markers. Step 7 is to format the new data series. So we will go to the chart layout and select series completion. Let's format the selection. What we want to do first is change the shape of the markers. So uh, marker options will go built in. We'll change the type to a diamond and change that to size 10. The marker fill, we'll do solid fill and the green color which is the same as the um, the same green as the other data series. Now we'll close that and with this data series still selected we're going to go to remove the data labels up here press none. Right that looks better. So now we have a new data series and what we need to do now is add the the actual completion percentages. So to do that I'm going to go up here, uh, series completion, make sure that's selected. We'll go to the error bars menu. We'll go more error bar options. Now with the vertical error bars I want to make sure there are none. So I will put a fixed value of 0. And with the x error bars, which I can get here, so series completion, x error bars, you'll see it says horizontal error bars. I'm going to change the error bars to uh, plus, no cap, the custom value which is going to be positive values. So x error bars are going to be the completion days. And that's g33 to g46. OK. And now we're going to have to format the color. We're going to go solid line, change the color to a green, and I will change the line style to seven points and click close. And now you'll see we've got we've got the uh, data series completion and we've got oh, one more thing I need to do actually let's go back and select this because I can see a little little outlines on there which I don't want let's go select the chart area layout or we'll select the series completion format the selection I forgot to change the outline for the marker marker line color this is it so no line and that's fine. So if I close that now, that little line should have disappeared. Okay, that's better. So that finishes step eight. In step nine, we're going to add a today line that will show where we are today. I'll make it a big red line like that. The way to do this is to right click the chart area. We're going to select data. Now let's add a new series. The series name I'm just going to call today. Uh, the series X values, I'm going to select C31, C32, C31, C32, and the series Y values, I'm going to select H31 to H32. I'll click OK, and OK again. You'll see it's added these two green markers. First thing I'm going to do is change that label, so select, click on that once to select both labels click on the top one again and it will select just the top one. I will type in today and enter. Let's change the label. Let's do let's make that bold by clicking bold. Now I'm going to select the other label. Make sure it's just that one selected. Press delete to get rid of it. And now I'll click on this one again and it should bring up when I double click it it will bring up these options and what I want is to format the label options so that they're above. Let's do that. Let's close there. And now if I click on the marker, I'm going to go to the layout, select. Now I'm going to make sure I've got the series today selected. The first thing I'm going to do is add error bars. 
So the error bars, and then I go more error bar options. With the vertical error bars, I want a minus with no cap, and a percentage I'll fix at 100%. So you'll see it's dropped down to the axis. Now I'll change the line color as well. I want a solid line, I want to make it red. Change the line style, let's change this to three points wide. That looks better. So now we've got the vertical error bars done. Let's get rid of the horizontal error bars. If I go select the series today X error bars, it will show the horizontal error bars. I will just go fix value and zero. So that's all good. Make sure there's no cap. Close that. And now if I click away, the only thing that's left is the marker. So I'll click on there, double click, and I shall do mark options, none. Uh, hang on, I should have done that for this as well. So none, close. So we here have a red today line, and the last thing I'm going to do is show you how these formulas are linked. So there's a formula here in cell C32, C31, C32, they both point to B2, which is the date here. And to make this dynamic, you change it to today, enter, and as soon as the date changes, the today bar will move with it. In step 10 we're going to add the chart legend. So we'll click on the timeline chart, we'll then head up to the insert menu, we will click on text box, you'll notice when I come back here the cursor is different. I'll draw out a box like so, and then type in legend. Now I'm going to right click on the border, I'm going to format the object. I'm now going to change the background fill so it's going to be a solid fill with a grey. We'll close that and now in here I'm going to change the font colour to white. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to align it to centre and to middle. And that's looking a bit better now but the last step is to Head to the formula bar, click in there, type equals, and I want to link that to cell E30, which is duration. Press enter, and it now says duration. Whatever I change cell E30 to, it will read up here. So the next step to do is to copy this and create another one for the completion. So I'm going to copy and paste with Control C, Control V reposition this about there. Now it doesn't have to be exact because what I'm going to do now is press control and click on the other text box and now when I go to the drawing tools menu and click format I can arrange and align the centers like so. Now let's just select the second text box. I will now right click the border format object. I'll change the solid fill color to the green that matches our completion bars. And then I'll head over to the formula bar and press equals and link that to cell G30 which says completion. And there we have it. That's our project timeline with a today line uh, chart legends and duration and completion bars. Alright, so what now? Well I suggest you download the template if you haven't already done so. Uh, have a play with it, create your own timelines and have a check of the next article I've got lined up which is going to enhance this template. So have a look at my website, check it out. In the meantime, have fun playing and learning and I'll see ya.